your tool time with tools, reviews, and stories from text that you can trust. Welcome everybody to another episode of PBR Tool Time. This is episode 169. I'm your host Vince D'Alessandro along with Daniel Grom and John Renstrom. We have a special guest tonight which we will introduce in a little bit but before we do we need to name our sponsors. So who's up for the sponsorship? Well we got Mobile Tech RX. Yeah. We got Hog Glue and Hog Tabs and we got Magnatech Matt. And also CBD Direct. And the last one is Edgy Tools. Yes. That's, so with that's right. Edgy Tools and CBD Direct, make sure you go to pdrtooltime.com and get your offer promo codes to get your discounts on all the tools at, at uh, uh, Edgy Tools and also at CBD Direct Oils. So, yes. gentlemen, I have been off for a couple weeks i've been busy doing imi training across the the continent over to canada and minnesota and texas and all over the place so yeah, you have I, I know i'm happy to be back daniel, here with you guys daniel was so lonely the f-bomb slipped through there last week without <laughs> no direction whatsoever yeah yes only one yeah. yeah i actually he actually vince called me he goes any edits nope no, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's. Turns uh, out you should have called. I forgot about that one. That now nah, John <laughs> reminded me. So two part blame: Daniel for dropping the f bomb, and me for not listening to the podcast while I was editing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so uh, equally, uh, what we do want to do, uh, what we do want to tell you is that uh, our Viper skins are out there. This is the the tool overlays that go on your a1 or your stand liner or your tequila tools uh you know in my opinion it's the best ratcheting handle out there uh but it has been a thorn in a lot of pe technicians side because of the comfortability factor of that that a1 ratcheting handle and uh your good friends here at pdr tool time we came up with a solution and we resolved it we did and uh it is over there at anson anson is selling it and they are the only distributors for it so far. So, uh, Viper skin set. Now, yes. now you can order it by color. So the set and in the black sizes. only has, yeah, it has two large and three small. If you buy the whole set. Yes. Now, now you can get them individually or the set, the whole set with five handles, 225, right on AnsonPDR.com. Correct. Now, now, a little tech tip. You do have to slice off the coating. The plastisol. The, the, the plastisol color coating. You do have to slice that off for it to fit in there. So that's a little. I, I saw the, Vin, the Vince video on that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> yeah. You. Well, yeah, yeah. You, you cut that off, and that's why I did that two minute long videos more of an instruction to uh how to actually put them on but uh yeah so they come in three different sizes there's only two sizes to the a1 ratcheting handle there's a large and a small so right. uh decide which ones you have and then decide how many that you need to cover your your grips and you'll thank us later for the comfortability you could actually put the x grip over it for you guys that have sweaty palms and it'll add a little bit of extra uh, grip power to it as well. But they're ergonomically correct for a reason. Once you get them in your hands, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a thumb groove, and it also acts as a knuckle groove, depending on how you hold the tool in your hand. Yeah, I'm going to have to. I was. I forgot to get mine ordered today. I'm going to need to get. Because in case anybody's curious, they do come in God's color, green. Yes. So just, you know, try to remember that. That's and, my, favorite. and my favorite color, orange. Yeah, and black, yeah. black like my soul. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so black, orange, and green. Uh, individual large handles are fifty dollars. Yeah, they're forty nine dollars a piece if you're buying them individually, or 49. you get a set yep. of five and it drops down to forty five dollars a piece. So yeah, for two hundred twenty five dollars, yeah. you could get five of them and wrap. If your you got five the full favorite. set of Reapers, you're gonna want the five set though. Yeah. Well, on yeah. the other hand, too, like the large Reaper, I would actually suggest going with John Hiley's handle, uh, which is the, yeah. the Gorilla Grip for door dingers. 
you know, because you're going to get a, a monster type of uh, uh, leverage on that. Uh, the pistol grip is actually really comfortable, but there's only so much you could do with the pistol grip, where if you're in a door, you're going to want that longer handle to uh, to get out there. But for the smaller, like if you have the ratcheting, uh, uh, the ratcheting, what, what, the tequila set, the five-tool tequila set, yeah. I, I would not suggest putting it on the little orange one. What's the orange one called? There's a name for it. That's that's that Pee Wee one. I, yeah, I have it, but I I hardly ever use it. Yeah. Um, but when you need it, right there, up by the belt molding has always been its little sweet spot for me. Yeah, and for me, I would never put that pistol grip on the on the Pee Wee, only because be you know you're it'd be overkill on that. But all yeah. the other ones, it's perfect. It's a small tool, so you're fine with that regular grip. Yeah. Well, cool, Daniel. Do you want to introduce our special guest for tonight? Yeah, <laughs> we are. Uh, proud to have Dave Haxton from Dent Smart. How are you, Dave? Ah, doing good, Daniel. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Ah. So we wanted to bring you on and talk to you about um, a couple of things that you're doing and who you are. And let's start. Let's start with a little history in case people don't know who you are. Uh, you started and own Dent Smart. That's correct. When and when did you start that? Uh, Nineteen ninety nine. 1999. And how many, how many employees do you currently have with Densmark? Um, zero employees. Everyone is a, um, well, I shouldn't say we have some in corporate, you know, but as technicians wise, everyone's an independent contractor, um, you know, which puts a challenge on us to retain uh, that group. Uh, and I think we do a good job of that. Oh, okay. Well, uh, how, how many, how many guys. guys do you have? That are independent. Uh, we're probably in a 120 range. Um, I would say most of those are what we would call core. Um, that you know we rinse repeat every year with the same group. So um, it's it's a it's a pretty good number. It's not a great great big number, but uh, it definitely um, uh, can grow. Right, if we if we have extra work or something, then we would take some of our peripheral techs and uh, you're um, underselling yourself because I've had in three employees <laughs> and I was pulling out my hair. So yeah, I, 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 but, I can, but I can see you have no hair. So I, <laughs> that's, my point. that's what happens. That's exactly right. Yeah. Now you, you covered quite a few States too, don't you with Den smart? That's correct. Uh, 17 States, I believe, uh, as we speak, uh, that we have under a franchise agreement. That's awesome. Yeah. You're, you're definitely underselling yourself. Oh, you think? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> uh, a huge. But it's a really good group. Well, thank you. It, 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 and then, sorry, I didn't cut you off. The, uh, the, it, you know, it's a collaborative effort. It, it wouldn't be uh, one person wouldn't be able to do any of this. You know, uh, uh, my my business partners uh, are much smarter than I. I think the joke is I'm bent and, and my partners are smart. Um, you know, I, I really focus on the technical side of it. Uh, um, but the business side of it is very well represented. Yes. Yeah. Now let me ask you this because with dent smart, uh, were, were you a technician beforehand or did you come in into this? Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So you come, oh, yeah. you are a technician born in the, in this trade and started this and grew it to something magnificent on your own. Well, not on your own. I'm sure you had a lot of people behind you helping you. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. In case anybody wants to know, I watched David clean up cars after the Dent Olympics. Oh, so, okay. He, I've, I've seen, I've witnessed him fix dents while I <laughs> interrupted him and talked to him. And and we've <laughs> seen what you have to clean up, and that's that's exactly. uh, that's that's well, got to say a lot about who, yeah. who and what kind of dent tech you are. Exactly. That's how I'm you know. Good at it. <laughs> That's how you know ARC certification means something. He knows what bad PDR can do yeah. <laughs> and how to That's clean it exactly up. exactly right. That's exactly right. Not that those are some gnarly that. dents, I have to say. Yeah. That, yeah. The, anybody that competes in the Dent Olympics is legit. Yeah. They can fix that. Dent. Those those aren't bad PDR. That is bad damage to have to fix under a tremendous yeah. amount of pressure. So. I would say that the guys that get in that you see the sweat pouring off of them, it's it's uh, probably a lot more challenging to them emotionally and physically than than they thought. 
Oh, absolutely. especially with the hour deadline or forty five minute deadline or whatever that is. Yeah. yeah, well, you know what? I blame the Russians for that. You know why? Because <laughs> <laughs> early on, they're always the ones. Early, yeah. Well, early on when we went to MTE years ago, me and uh, Mike Toledo, you know, it, it was like more of a fun type of atmosphere doing the dent olympics and tom price was in charge and and uh you know it was it wasn't so it was competitive but it wasn't like you know people would show up half drunk and you know hung over from the night before and just go out there and do it just for a laugh and stuff but now it's serious business i mean they there's there's people that like have went and made cannons and bought cannons to practice throughout the year to compete in this you know challenge each other on the facebook yeah now, did you guys hear the the new announcement for MTE at Las Vegas? They're going to be changing it up at Las Vegas, and it's going to be a triathlon. And so it's going to be three dents, a door ding, a crease, and then a glue pool on a rail. What do you guys think about that? Why? I right like right. it. Uh, I'm one of the judges, so I, I'm looking forward to how that is going to translate, you know, uh, to a winner, um, you know, you're going to have to do that bad door ding. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the door ding is going to be very similar to how bad they've been uh, in the past, a little slight stretch to them. Um, yeah. But I, I agree. I, I'd like to see how three dips translates to, you know, a winner. Did, now, John, is that, John, isn't that, is that how they did it in Japan? When you yeah. Were under, <laughs> under Isari, they did. Yeah. We had to do multiple dents. Was it a um, crease and a dent and a didn't, glue pole? Uh, multiple areas. So we didn't have to do the dent. You had to do the glue pole, the fender, and a door. Okay. So I'm really okay. looking. I, I really want to see how they do this with the piece and uh, and throwing that in there because that really takes a lot of the over practice out of it. A guy can't just sit with a can and bang a door dent, tweak it, bang a door dent, tweak it i mean you're gonna have to do that crease and how do you create that crease over and over yeah uh, how do you duplicate it that's that's a challenge so uh it'll be an interesting first year i'll i'll uh i i hope i won't be so busy at our booth that i'll actually be able to go see some of it you'll be busy at your booth john probably yeah, <laughs> yeah. so so Dave, <laughs> that's an understatement right <laughs> yeah. yeah i would i would like to pretend that i could go see something at one of these shows but reality is probably not. <laughs> yeah so uh dave so with dent smart i noticed you guys are, are like you said you're in the technical side of it and you're 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 a pleasure to talk to. Every time I've gotten a chance to sit down and talk to you, you, you have a great mind, and I really appreciate the conversations that we've had. And uh, and I know you. like you really uh, like I was looking at some of your stuff on Dent Smart with iCar certifications and stuff like that. And one of the ones that you've come up with yourself is uh, the ARC certification. Do you want to tell our listening okay. audience a little bit more about uh, where that came from and, and what your idea and plan was for that? Uh, sure. You know, uh, it, it started with Densmart. I would call Densmart a, uh, almost like a Petri dish uh, for the idea. Um, I was, I, you know, I had a full contact. Uh, we're talking 2009, so ARC is well, 10 years old now. Um uh, a lot of people don't know that, that we were doing the 10 years. So w with DentSmart, it was like a, a you know, a, a controlled environment. I, I, I had uh, access to the same people year in and year out, year in and year out. I often work with them, right, side by side. So um, for me, what we needed to do was allow technicians to declare. Uh, that was the, the term at the time. Um and, you know, there was an upper echelon, an upper crust in us, and they needed to be able to differentiate themselves. Um, part two of that was to bring up the people that weren't there yet, uh, that we, we would set a bar and uh, we would use each other to verify one another. There wasn't any buddy love. You had to have three referrals from other technicians that you worked with with multiple transactions. So fast forward to last year, we decided to um, open this up to public. Uh, in, and we brought in uh, the PDR version of it, which uh, included uh, 
the three to five work examples that you would use, you know, maybe from photo or video. Uh, so that was that was where we started with public. You know, once we learned how to do, uh, and, and, and and I'll backtrack just a second. The 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 term for uh, arc is uh, meritocracy. And, uh, you know, that is a that is a peer based group of experts who, you know, the only people that can uh, verify or in this case, certify one another is us. You know, that there wasn't a, a non expert that could do that. There wasn't a, a light that could read it the way we could read it. And so that's where uh, the uh, most of the ideas uh, uh, ended up, you know, with the with the PDR version, uh, it's been an absolute. I never would have imagined it was going to grow like it did. Yeah. Uh, you know, I actually made some artwork about reaching 200 memberships. When we reached it, I would release this artwork, and we were at 300 within a month. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It, 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 and and it, even today, Robert and I, Robert is the new presiding officer, Robert Castillo. Um, we work together. Prob- people don't realize this. We're spending four or five hours a day talking and, and reaching out to one another and, uh, you know, everything that's involved. And uh, bless his heart, I thought he'd quit by now because he's running a full-blown hailstorm. And he's just been a trooper and he really enjoys it. I asked him if he wanted to quit. Yeah. You know, I, I know it's overwhelming and uh, he's just, he's the perfect person for it. He's super qualified, obviously. Yeah. And, um, but man, he's a great cheerleader. You know, he, 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 he everything's from the heart with Robert. Yeah. Uh, you know, doesn't have anything to sell. So everything's from his heart. And uh, so he's the perfect president for, for ARC. And I think, you know, I, I I'm proud to say that, uh, you know, I was chosen for that uh, about a year ago, and I really appreciated the, the accolades that came along with that. And, uh, you know, to to be uh, considered for a, uh, a certification like that without me pursuing it was, was very flattering. Uh, I believe John's also uh, certified. Yes. I'm... I'm uh, I'm sad to see that our Daniel point, is Daniel. All three of you are all four of you. No, I Daniel's think. not. Yeah, I am. Oh, yeah, are you? He is. Oh, damn it. Yes, he is. I thought, Absolutely. Jeez, I thought Daniel was the odd man out. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, Daniel submitted some absolutely stunning work, and uh, it, it, it's exactly what ARC is about. Is, you know, I, I don't think that when we post on Facebook our repairs, that there's any redemptive value. Sure. Uh, you know, you get you get a hundred likes from your friends, and that's it. So I started noticing that you know, without that redemptive value, how can we use that as a personal weapon? Each one of us, whether you work for Densmart or whoever you are, if if you're a clinician like me, how do you uh, capture that work? Right, continue uh, continuous. Uh, 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 what am I looking for? The the the, the uh, resource to, to 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 find my work. Yeah. Uh, what what is that? Uh, so how do you trans? You know, give that to the customers, and and so that's the whole basis of art is to add some redemptive value to your repairs. Well, by being able. I'm sorry. Well, you kind of gave. I really wanted to pick on Daniel. I didn't think he was certified, <laughs> but <laughs> magnificently, magnificently certified. He is. He, he is top notch. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. So, well, with that, with that in mind, with with the with the peer to peer viewing of it, and it's of course, you know, we've been all, uh, you know, we've all seen pictures on the internet with lighting a little bit closer or farther away and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. know how you know pictures can hide lights or hide damage and, and whatnot. Uh, oh, but, we're all experts right. at, at manipulating the photo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're a dent guy, you figured it out. You figured out sure. what, yes. what, what looks good and how to fake it and how to make it. Hey, there's times that I thought I was done with the dent until I went to go do an after video. I'm like, oh, geez, I didn't see that with my naked eyes, but video you see it with the nothing. video. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Video Absolutely. can be very brutal. I, I know I've done a couple of videos and it was like, man, I did not see that shadow. Yeah. And then, you, you know, then you're just dropping that light. Um, so if you guys want to read more about it, if you're not ARC certified, if you want to read more about it, you can just go to certifiedpdr.com. 
Yeah, yeah. And you can read up. Um, you can actually check up. I think you can search to find out if a technician is truly ARC certified, correct? That's correct. You can just use their name. Uh, there's a there's a, a seg section called Verify Technician. And, uh, you know, the the website is designed to give that technician a uh, – it, it, it gives them a URL code and a QR code. And anyone that's researching them, obviously, they've done some kind of transaction. Maybe it's a, a an estimate on their car or whatever. Now that they've got that person's attention, they can say, you know, you could, you're welcome to check my uh, credentials. Uh, you're welcome to check it. And so the QR code, URL code goes directly to that person's profile. They don't need that, that customer doesn't have to navigate our site. That was a very important part of the, uh, of the equation. However, if you want to just go on and research someone, you can click on the, any if, if the state that they live in, or you can just punch their name in. I think what's really cool about it, too, is that, you know, the, m the majority of us are lone wolves. We run around. We have nothing Correct. to compare it to. You know, we don't have another dent guy in our company or another dent guy that we, you know, most of us don't talk to our competition, our direct competition. Um, and it's still, we have nothing to compare our work to. And, you know, when when you go on the Internet, you see some of these technicians that are just killing like these monstrous dents and and you know yeah. for me it inspired me seeing the bryce kelly's out there and, and the Kazes and Absolutely. stuff like that you know uh even being a, a 24 year tech going on 25 years i'm still inspired by those guys and trying to make my quality better trying to you know expand my knowledge of dent removal and how you know the the way to make metal move like that you know it's it's an amazing thing yeah yeah, one one of the things I noticed on the website is there's still a couple states that you don't have some techs in. So guys, out I'm, there, I'm, uh, yes, Nevada. Why isn't there any techs in Nevada? Where, there be somebody in in uh, <laughs> Las Vegas. Yeah, maybe yeah, I would. There'd be someone in Nevada. I would. Uh, um, yeah, like when there's one in Alaska, um, but um, you know, there's Vermont. There's. Uh, Rhode Island, um, yeah, I think uh, I think we have an Oregon one now. We just had a Virginia the other day at Tech in Virginia. So let's get all those skate, uh, Cody, states Cody covered, Rattler. guys. You know, if you're listening to the podcast, get on there and get certified. Now, David, we also have a big international following. This is just for the states. This certification that you have, correct? You know, it is, uh, it, and I I don't know if I need to explain it. It it, but the uh, we love our foreign brothers. We do. Uh, it to us, there's no reciprocity for hail. Um, you know, I, I don't. I'm not over there. Hopefully, you're not over here. Um, so when you look at it from a PDR perspective, uh, a lot of our members. Um, they would, uh, you know, and a lot of our notes come from our members. Uh, they made the point that it's just a different economy. You know, yeah, you can fix that gate, but it, in America, that gate, right, coming on a parts truck two or three times a week to a major able body shop. Uh, I can get that gate and stick it on and have it done by Friday. Uh, you know, I remember Kaz, and I know that Kaz has a lot of trouble getting uh, logistics for his parts over there. He said he spent 10 days on a fender for a BMW, you know, and, and in this country that would get right, that would get replaced very quickly. So uh, we just didn't see that the economy was, uh, it, it didn't match up. So uh, uh, that said, you know, on the front end, we have so many U.S. technicians joining, uh, almost 40 to 50 a month. Uh, it takes two days to process each one. Uh, the foreign technicians were coming at us so hard and fast that it was really detracting from, you know, so the decision was made about a week into it. Uh, I, I used a group of consultants, uh, experts in the, in the field, and uh, they agreed that we just needed to focus on uh, the U.S. economy technicians. Yeah, no, that makes sense. You know, that um, the guys over in Europe, start your own. And those countries often have what I would call personal engagement uh, certification where you're with a group, you're in, in a group of 10 or 20 or 30 or whatever, and you're, you're, you're physically in front of everyone. And, you know, uh, I talked to a guy from Germany or maybe Kenji from Japan or maybe the guys from PDN, you know, they can, they can drive 
to a central location. And I, I made the point that the state of Texas alone, John, you know it, is bigger than most of Europe. Yeah. Uh, all those countries combined that I just named, you know, you add France, you add Italy, uh, Texas covers just Texas. So, you know, we tried the personal engagement with the veil. And you know, as much as I like Dale and and wish that they would be interested in you know being with us again, um, it was logistically tough to drive to one location, right? And 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 fix it then and and spend that kind of money. And uh, so it, it it was it was it was a uh, that's what probably lost. You know, you know what I you know what I from, like about the arc certification? It's simple and clean it's not overcomplicated a lot of these other deals are overcomplicated and you got to do too much you got to travel and stuff so i like your system better than than everybody else well yeah. yeah and over in europe they have the imi has pdr certification over there uh so you know the, the guys at tdn kevin andrews he teaches he certifies technicians almost on a weekly basis over there and their certification runs out every three years. So they have to get retested. They have to get retested every three years to keep their certification process. And mm. I thought that was really interested. Interesting. When I went over there, I spent 10 days getting certified to teach the, the, uh, the power down procedures, the EV. And I also got certified as an instructor to certify PDR as well. And, it okay. was it was very practical. It made sense, uh, and I'm not Absolutely. I'm not bashing Vale because Vale was the first one to really come up with something, and they weren't PDR right. they weren't PDR technicians. They you know they had cameras that were so hyper focused that showed way too much detail that none of us would ever even see, you know. And uh, that's why I never jumped on board with Vale myself. But uh, you know, it, it there's. <laughs> I'm actually really excited about the PDR IMI thing. We're just not rolling it out here just yet. And I know, you know, Kevin has talked to you about it, Dave. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about what it involves. I, I get why they do it every three years. He's going to add the element of, uh, yeah, we want to know you're credible, okay. But we also want to make sure that you're up to date on the, you know, like the ADAS systems or, um, you know, that's the part of the IMI PDR certification that I'm probably the most excited about. Sure. Uh, love to see it over here. Um, you know, you guys are really doing well with the, uh, the EV certification. So if it follows that same format um, and every three years I'm being taught in a class how to address, you know, the new issues of, of these alternative fuel vehicles, uh, you know, from scanning to, you know, every, everything. Uh, yeah. I, that that's the part of IMI that makes the most sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yep. And the that's, cool thing is, is they're they're right, they're behind PDR a hundred percent. I mean, they love our industry. Correct. Where I can't yeah, say, you know, from what I've the research I've done, you know, we have ICAR here, but they have kind of turned our backs, their backs on us in the past. I hear that that might be changing a little bit, but uh, well, I'm trying hard with that. We're we're trying really, really hard. Densmart is trying really, really hard with with ICAR to, um, you know, they're on a mountain of responsibility. They really sure. are. They, yeah. they they have all these bodies, right? They have that industry to to to, to take care of, and so uh, we can't be uh, there. You know, again, and I uh, ICAR is designed for a captured employee at a fixed location. Yep, that's a that's that's a that's not a good thing. Uh, in our industry, we're the exact opposite on both. We're a mobile technician, right? And uh, um, not in a fixed location, we're in multiple locations. So how do, how, do, how do you reach to us? And that's, again, that's the beauty of IMI, that they made a mobile version. I'm very impressed with, with uh, yeah, that company is, is uh, you know, they're with OE, uh, just as much as ICAR. Uh, you know, maybe we haven't heard of IMI, but they are definitely have a PDR backbone yeah. and, uh, and bring that mobile to us. So I'm impressed with them. Yeah, that's great. Let me ask, let me ask you this, Dave, what, what is the future for arc certification? Where would you like, like if we're going to project into the future, what are some of the future goals and future ideas of where you want to see arc certification go? Big picture. You know, 
Big picture stuff. Uh, the main thing was, uh, you said it earlier, uh, we want to stay simple. Um, you know, when things like IMI come along, they're not going to have a dedicated website. Uh, we want to have that dedicated website where if anything that you do credentially, uh, we want to be able to record that in one place. Uh, we encourage you to do IMI. We would encourage you to do ICAR. I, I'd love to use their badging. Um, they won't let us, let us use that yet, but uh, I'm working on it. Now, yeah, um, and, and but, you mentioned what you're talking about is when I got certified, um, you showed my IMI certification on my profile. So when someone, correct. a customer comes to my profile, they see that I am IMI certified. And correct. hopefully you'll be able to get everybody else on board that you'll be able to show everybody's certifications, correct? That's correct. That's correct. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so if, if there is a, if I, I don't, uh, to say there's a future, I, I, I can see some things evolving, like further separation amongst the elite. Um, I mean, I think that you, going through our process certainly makes you a valid elite technician, at least in, you know, I don't know if there's a perfect way to certify everybody, but I think we'd get pretty close. And, uh, but what we really see is, uh, we see a, some separation within even that group. Um, and I think it's our goal, Daniel, to answer your question. I, I think it's our goal to uh, not just verify people, but also help uh, create awareness and train them to have better reusable content for themselves, whether it's their websites or their Facebook pages, whatever. But we want to train them how to take their before and afters and uh, set that bar, quote unquote, and, 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 you know, we want them to be a better, a better version of themselves. So yeah. it, it, that's our, that's our future. That, that's, that's in a nutshell. Uh, there, there, you know, there's, I don't see us going anywhere. Uh, I don't see it being so impact. I think to me, if you're an ARC member, you're an owner. Uh, you know, it's, it's not something that can be monetized, right? Can't be really, can't be sponsored, especially if I'm shunning foreign conditions. Like that's one area of your, your clientele. Uh, it's hard to ask for a sponsorship from anyone or, or anything, right? But yeah, by the way, we don't, we don't love foreign technicians. Um, so it can't be monetized. It, uh, it's not going to be sold. Um, I just see some further separation, some further badging and, uh, uh, other than that, just keep it really nice and simple and honorable. You know, I, I'd like to expand on that a little bit, that, that I hope someday I can, I can offer you a, a, a special badging for Tex, a bench grinder certification. <laughs> that, bench that, grinder, okay. Yeah, I, I'm very well known as uh, using my bench grinder, and I'm going to certify Tex on how to use a bench grinder. And... Uh, <laughs> And, and then we'll offer that bent, that that badging to your ARC certification. Yeah, because Dave, he actually, every single tool that Daniel gets, it's not good enough when he gets it out of the box. He has to take it to the bench grinder and make it custom. Uh, oh, is that right? You know, Daniel, something that you should think about is uh, I, I would love to learn more about motorcycles from you. I, I think that's a whole genre that's untapped out there. If, if you're ever thinking about that, we would I, I would certainly take that class. Yeah, I guess that's that's important too. But bench grinders really, really. <laughs> that's your that's your passion. Okay, that, right. that's, passion that's project. It's, it's it is. really really yeah. important for the bench grinder to be out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But uh, yeah, you know that that could be something that we can. Uh, I'm gonna talk you into it. it. Um, you let me you let me talk you into it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> cool. All right. So we got there's two levels of arc right now. You've got hail. And what is the other one? The the just the PDR, just straight PDR. Now, are you right. guys considering um, breaking that down? I mean, we, Bryce Kelly's name got brought up, so let's talk about the guy that you know de guardrails the side of a Buick on a weekly basis. You know, is there? Do you uh, see who's splitting um, arc into you know PDR hail uh, um, mastering of ex yeah large extreme large damage absolutely um i think that we first we had to set a, a, the first bar the first line and that was have you mastered it you know have you mastered complex difficult repairs you know not glorifying the camera angles 
not giving us, uh, you know, popper dents or everyday repairs that you're actually you know, really, you know, not super complex, but it, it, there's some complexity there. And, uh, so once we, we did a photo contest, I don't know if you remember this, it was just members only and it, we extracted information out of it. Number one being, uh, how do people record their before and afters? Here's what we found. Most people took photos, obviously. And most people took the before under lighting. Look how bad it is, right? And then, uh, then they would take the after under an oak tree. And, uh, you know, look how good I fixed it. And so, you know, we knew that people needed help understanding what, what it is that, you know, that could have been a good moment for them had they recorded that better or maybe spent another 15 minutes on it, you know, cleaning it up to what, what are we afraid of? You know, we all know that nothing is necessarily flawless, you know, uh, I'm not knocking anybody's work, but even the best of the best, you know, if you really want to pick at it, video, like you said earlier, doesn't lie. Um, so I'm so impressed when I see video and I'm so impressed when I see video in lighting, that's really rare. Uh, so out of the hundreds that we saw, I'm going to say, say lighting, not, the dent light. Yeah. And if you do use PDR lighting, I think that this was something that was brought up to us early. I think Shane Jacks brought it up that if you use lighting in your before or your after, you don't want to include the fixture itself in the photo. To the layman, that looks like a heater. Uh, they become distracted over what you actually want them to look at, and uh, they just don't understand what it is. Uh, so, you know, if anything, just use the reflection of that lighting. And if you're going to use lighting, you know, dim that dimmer down so that you're not drowned in it out. Yeah. Uh, and also, in your before and after, you kind of want to make sure you have the light in the same location. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right? Same angle that you know you yeah. you don't want to you don't want to misstep anywhere in there because obviously dent guys are going to be very critical. Uh, you took the you didn't take them for dent guys to to look at them though uh, necessarily. You know, we found that out too that most people took their photos to uh, entice them and to believe in their credibility. So you know they weren't planning to be in a dent contest per se. Uh, but still you get your Bryce Kelly's out there that are like, you know, your, your Robert Castillo's that do a really great job of recording because they use for, for reusable content yep. for themselves. My biggest problem was I, I always forget to start the before because you get the <laughs> car in, you get the car in and you're just like mentally going through all of the steps that you're going to do for the repair. Absolutely. And then you just like rip into it and you're two thirds of the way you're done. And you're like, I can't even show it yeah. off. You know what? It's way worse when you forget you've done that. And then, and then you get all excited about it and you take it outside and you deliver it and they, they're driving away in it. And you're like, Oh shit. Uh, I forgot to take the after photo. Oh, the but, only, and the even only after would... even worse is when, when you don't think it's going to come out perfect. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, I'm not going to videotape that. That's, That's what it is. Yeah, I don't have any hope of fixing this. I'm not Flawless. taking a picture. Yeah. And then you make it, you glass it. It's like, holy cow, I glass that. I should have yeah. videotaped yep. that. <laughs> Your OCD the, the only, in and then you fix it. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that I did not video back under the same lighting that I started with was I did just this crushed, crushed roof on this, uh, I think it was a Tahoe. Tahoe or a Yukon, the short one. And I did a video of it in the um, before I ever fixed it as a look how bad the hail hit in this town. And then it turned out we couldn't get a roof for it. And it was all this. And I'm like, ah, you know, like five days later, I'm fixing this stupid thing out. And uh, it just crushed. And it takes me a day and a half. And I'm, I'm, I'm just so frustrated and annoyed. And, you know, it was like, I was just glad to be done with it. I'm moving on to the next car. It was, you know, on to better work. It was just one of those jobs that you had to be. And then I'm like, oh, I fixed that. I had a before video. <laughs> Two days later, I had to go track that truck down. After it got done, uh, they put sure. the hood on it. And I think they had to paint the fenders because of cracked paint. And uh, I was like, ah, oh, I had to go track it all down right before it was, it was in detail, just before delivery. And I'm like, don't wash the bumper. And I'm hopping up on the rear bumper and trying to video the <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise i always try to uh you know you don't always need a light on it at the start but you should get that good reflection on the end 
And uh, I always like to try to get the camera on the video in there and show a little of that texture, especially when you got that fine metallics in there. Let that Correct. let that show. See that? See if you can see those little poke marks. The video will show it all. So, Dave, are you still out there fixing dents? I am. You are. It, uh, yep. And, every not every day, but uh, a lot of times I cover extra work at our shop, uh, learning, uh, um, you know, the, the, just your normal stuff that comes in the shop. Yeah. My lead technician is uh, obviously the one that wants all the the heavy stuff and the the most pay, yeah. right? And that's kind you're of in, you're, for him. Um, you're in Tennessee. That's correct, Nashville. Nashville. Sure. I'm going to come out and visit you one of these days. You should, and I have a place for you to stay. We got a nice little uh, forty acre farm here. I got a nice little. Uh, we got extra room. My wife and I are empty nesters, so uh, you just bring yourself right on over here. Well, we need to get you to teach an I I M I class here. That's what we need. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, I was talking to Jesse uh, from Dentman Tools, and he wanted wanted to host one. So I believe he's close to you. Maybe not. I'll have to do something. Oh, something. yeah. He's too far. He's four hours. Three four, and a half yeah, hours. that's too far. I was going to say, yeah, isn't he Knoxville? Yes. And, uh, yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that's a little so, bit too far. That yeah, that's, that's a bit of a commute. <laughs> different time zone. Yeah, it's a different time zone. I, I live right on the edge of the time zone. So, you, you, yeah. you, yeah, you would travel three hours, three and a half hours, but you would. You, you lose an hour too. So. Yeah. No, that's it. I think now, the David's other... out there with a different type of ranch. See, I'm here in South Dakota, and just right outside my door is a whole herd of cattle. Now, um, David, he he popped through. We got to see part of his herd come through, and and he herds cats. Yes. So if yes. you want to know how they perfected <laughs> ARC certification and dealing with dent guys, is is David is a professional cat herder. <laughs> I have a lot of them. I'm very proud of my cat. Well, there is nothing dent guys can throw at him that he's not like prepared to handle. It's like <laughs> if you're not squirting urine, he's not even. You're not even phasing him. <laughs> yeah, but he's got no mice. Yeah. He's got no rats. <laughs> yeah. I have zero. That's exactly right. Well, very important. I think the other important thing is the fact that you're a Cubs fan. So you know, you have my heart when I found out you're a Cubs fan. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I David, I hard Cubs fan. Yes, I am. How'd that happen? <laughs> I was born in Peoria, Illinois, and I got sent uh, Cubs mm -hmm. stuff all the time. And I uh, was a big baseball fan, and uh, um, just never left it. And I then I think it was Harry Pure. Carey, though. You, you what? I'm pretty. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Harry Carey that. Oh yes, Harry Carey. Most a lot of it. Yeah. I the first time I fixed hail was in Peoria with uh, Tom Tom Price. Now, yes, sir. That's that's where I got to know Tom. That's correct. Yeah, what? Uh, and that's my partner lives in Peoria. My my original uh, partner uh, is from uh, Peoria, Illinois. Well, here's a, a piece of useless information. My father is buried two graves away from Harry Carey's grave. Wow. So every time that is who's Harry just Carey? Crazy. Oh, what? You don't know who Harry Carey is? He's only the greatest <laughs> announcer ever. He started in St. Louis, though. He was a cards guy, but don't know. Yeah, Sorry. But, yep. uh, his claim to fame is he would drink a lot of Bud Light, Daniel, and broadcast games. And by the eighth inning, the stuff was slurring. <laughs> yes, and it was perfect because we we were terrible. The Cubs were terrible. Yes, and it didn't at matter. least your announcer. Yeah, you were at least you were getting as the goal was to get as drunk as the announcer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the pain would go away. Yes, the pain of being a Cubs fan would go away. It would, it would go away because I'm Harry Carey blistered by yeah, yeah by the eighth inning. Well, just go, hey, Daniel, look up a Will Ferrell Harry Carey on Saturday Night Live. Oh my God, okay. you'll 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 get it. <laughs> okay. Yes. So. But uh, is is there any other burning desires here? We're getting to the end here. We've actually gone through a, the whole podcast here. You have anything else to uh, share with us, Dave or uh, John, Daniel? Um, yeah, Daniel. I motorcycle PDR. I just want to say, hey, thanks, David, for coming on. Man, appreciate you absolutely like, some time out this evening. It was great to finally get you, you know, on the show. Uh, and I thank you guys pretty very much for uh, allowing me to be on here. This is our first time uh, with Ark uh, being any kind of public forum. Um, I'm, 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 I'm hoping that there's not a big rush 
uh, <laughs> Robert and I are already catching up. You know, just to give you some numbers, we have 70 people in the process right now. Wow. Um, and that number hasn't gone down. And every day we do one or two, but we get a new one or two. Uh, and it's not like you can do five or six a day. You just can't do it. No. Uh, it's, 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 you can send them off to the panel. You know, we have to hand build the plaques. And I mean, those are things that we take a lot of pride in hand signing, hand noting, uh, everything built by hand. And so it's, we, we always knew that it would be a trickle kind of thing eventually. Uh, it is not trickled right now. And, uh, so we're, <laughs> We're, we're doing a, 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 a lot of work, in, but it's very redemptive work, and I, I love it. Robert loves it, and uh, uh, so maybe after the podcast, I'm going to look it up and see that 95 more people join tonight. <laughs> yeah, and, you might uh, be in trouble. <laughs> well, it'll be, next yeah, tu- it'll be trouble. after next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, yeah. this will air, and then you'll be <laughs> yeah. in trouble. You you and Robert got seven days to get that schedule cleared, and then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's one step forward, two steps back. Uh, yeah. uh, it seems like. Well, uh, we think you're doing great great things for the yeah. industry. You know, I had a long conversation with you last Sunday, and it was a pleasure talking to you. And and knowing, I love talking to other dent techs that have their heart in the right place. They want to make this industry great and they're all doing their part. You know, I love being a part of this industry. I'm so proud of this industry. Um, you know, the, the Anson open house and being able to talk to all the, the manufacturers in one place was fantastic. And just great the, people there at Anson. Wasn't we it? are, great we people. are controlling our, our destiny. We're controlling the industry. We're, we're, driving it all in the right direction. Everybody's got their, their little part in some part of the industry. And I love that. Yep. I do too, Daniel. Good point. And I, and I thank you for being part of that. Absolutely. Be part of it. And, uh, with no strings attached. I mean, it, it, you're devoting so much time and money into this certification. Start off with Dent Smart, and you grew it to everyone else and opened it up to everyone else. And I know I'm myself. I, I appreciate it. I'm sure these two guys do, and everyone else out there that's already been certified. I mean, it, it's great. It's a great industry to be in, and, and it's wonderful to have you be a part of that and, and bring your confidence and and your good vibes to our our industry. Yep. Nah, thanks for the kind words. Uh, we're, yeah, we're not trying to make you cry. From, you guys are my heroes. I have to tell you, all three <laughs> of you are my heroes. So um, you're nice to hear. Okay. Well, Enough of stroking our own backs. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Remember level up your tools, don't do stupid stuff, and remember to keep it stiff. <laughs>